Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Red. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're doing something that I'm very excited about. <laughs> we are going through all the things or some of the things that we have bought in 2020. We're looking back on 2020 through the lens of our Amazon shopping cart yeah. order history. This yes. is your idea. Well, actually, uh, the general, the I think the general idea was Stevie's idea. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, in the, uh, the Ear Biscuits uh, topics doc that we all share. And then forget she, to look at I, until I, like six I, months later. And this later. is like, because everybody, we were having these conversations about what people, everybody was buying things in new and different ways. And I think people were, and I know I was buying things almost therapeutically like in quarantine, you don't have a lot of things to interact with other than your family. You find yourself like going to Amazon and thinking, I do need that, if you're me at least. Yeah. And um, so when she said, what did you buy in quarantine? You know, that was like six months ago she suggested that. So now it's, what did, what did you buy in 2020? Because we're almost done with the year, bro. Yeah, you can look back. I mean, it's not that we bought everything through Amazon, but I mean, I mean. It's the easiest we're place. We're submitting to our, shopping corporate overlord, it's just, you know, you can't help yourself. Well, I mean. Uh, we buy local too. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna get. Mostly when it comes to foods. Yeah, we're not gonna get into a commentary of the uh, the nature of buying so so many things Matter through, fact, through Amazon. Let's not even mention Amazon yeah, in this right. conversation. Well, but all these are gonna be Amazon links and we're also gonna use, we're gonna link all the things that we talk about in the description of both the audio and the video podcast with our affiliate links. Oh, because uh, I mean, if <laughs> okay. you don't, if you don't end up buying some of the stuff after I talk about it, then I'm a bad salesman. So how does that? So you're telling me if they click on the link that we provide, I don't really know how it then works. Then we we get a little cut of it. I think it goes. It might go to charity. Honestly, all I know is I, that it's fun to I, talk I, about I, what you bought. I feel like I should know how the affiliate program works. It's better if you don't. Because it makes this because I think pure. it's actually very simple. But I just have never asked any questions. People are just like, "Oh yeah, we have an affiliate." Program. I'm assuming I'm assuming it's a referral, little little stipend. Um, but that's not why we're we're not doing this to make money. No, no, it's interesting. Well, we're, do, we're doing this because there, well, you, you might, got to charge out of buying these things. Now you get to charge out of talking about. Well, it. you might notice there's a slight difference. Now I went through my Amazon uh, history. Now let me, me too. Let me say that I did as well. This is not my wife. My wife's Amazon and my Amazon. We have separate Prime accounts. I don't know exactly how that started, but so you're paying double. Well, you can sh you can share accounts on on the Prime. The but that reason didn't work I started it is because I needed to get. I have to get her presents through Amazon, and I don't want her to know that I'm, what I'm getting for different holidays and birthdays and right. stuff. So I'm sure there was a smarter way to do this, but long ago I just started my own account, and so. Uh, just to let you know, this is all things that I individually decided to buy. This is not what my kids wanted. This isn't what my wife wanted. That's a separate account. And and I picked out what I'm guessing is 10% of the items that I bought in 2020 and I have 35 things to go through. I went through my um, Amazon account, which I share with Christy. It's, it's technically Christy's account because you know, you wanna get the prime shipping. And then th the thing where you can add my own account to her account and link the prime shipping to be shared by the family, I I didn't quite figure that out. Yeah, so, so the affiliate program is so complex that you really need a degree I ain't got time for to that. get through so it. So the vast majority of things that I look back through on 2020 in my account, it, like everything our family purchased is in there. So you had to find the things that you I had to like individually wanted and bought. Yeah. Um, and how many things you bring to the table? Four. <laughs> I I bought I bought slightly more things than that, but oh, they were wow. just like this is a, there's a big difference, man. I we, mean, we, we, this is the, yeah, we different personalities, different I mean, dispositions. I didn't want to. I didn't want one of my things to be paper towels or toilet tissue. You know that that, that you didn't. You picked interesting things that are that are related to your. Most of the things I picked, I, I think there there's a. There's definitely a story behind, like I said, nine out of 10 things I did not put on this We're list. We're very different people when it comes to uh, buying things. Maybe we'll get into that later, but 
I, I'll pepper in some of mine. I mean, <laughs> I've only got four, so is, how do you- Is one of them pepper? How do you wanna do this? <laughs> uh, well, we should get started because I got a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I, I, now, go, go for it. I, some of these will have a have a, 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 some associated background and some I might just say, and if you have a question about them, you ask it. If you don't, I might just move on, okay? Uh, this That's is in, right. This is in reverse chronological order. So I'm starting with the most recent things and going deeper into the year. Backwards. I didn't. I could have been made it more interesting, but that's it's this simple. Uh, first item: best made dill juice. Dill juice. Dill juice. D i l l. Dill okay, juice. You're talking about pickle juice. Yeah. All right. I know what this one is. Right. Yeah. I, I, I told you about this. Um, you made some hot chicken sandwiches at your home. Right. I made some. This is a sore subject for me. Yeah. I, well, we can talk about that because your wife had some choice words for you at your at the at your get the get together at I your house. The other I didn't night. appreciate that. Well, I didn't say anything about it. Well, what you did say was tomorrow I'm making hot chicken sandwiches. I've done research and I'm you know I'm going to make these at home. And did you know that they brine the chicken in dill pickle juice and that's the secret. Yeah. And I'm doing this tomorrow and we're really excited about it. And, and I was kind of locked in on Christy as I was talking about it because I knew that she would care more than anyone else. Oh, and she did and she was like, I'm excited about it too. Do I can I get one? Man, I wish and then she turned to me, she's like, I wish you would do <laughs> stuff like this. I wish that you would co like come up with something to cook and then the next thing you know, you're cooking it and then we're eating it. Like Right, yeah, that's kind of I, I mean like well, I uh, didn't know what to say. Well, uh, it's, it's fine because I also closed the talking about it with the promise that I'm gonna become like a, my own little pop-up and I'm gonna be making these things. Now I was perfecting this recipe by doing it for my family and boy, I got it right on the first try. And so next time, and I'm gonna do this with the, when I make brisket and when I make pulled pork, and I'm, I'm gonna make I more. I believe in this. I'm this gonna doesn't make, make me mad. I'm gonna make more than I need, and I'm gonna take some to my friends, including your family, and I'm for free. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna gladly eat it, take it. <laughs> but then, you know, if 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 it becomes a thing, I'll be gladly to make it our thing that like I could help with. You know, well, it's not gonna be a promotion. It's not a money making scheme. I can, this I can, is a, this is just a generosity thing. And in fact, I, I can help with the content, the, 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 the ancillary content. I'm the last piece of the puzzle is pies. I want to figure out how to make amazing pies and so I bring you, I actually, the whole idea, I was gonna call it thighs and pies, but it's more than just thighs. What about pie thighs? It's, it, it's, uh, you know, it's also barbecue and it's other things. A, ch a, a but, chicken sandwich that's made with the thigh is the best, man. So, you know. Uh, Lindsay, Nobody does that. Lindsay, who works with Jesse, uh, was at the house last night and uh, she had been at the house during the day and I got home and I was like, where's, because I, I made this this weekend and I had like six pieces of this chicken left over and I got home last night and it was all gone. And uh, I was like, oh, y'all ate all the chicken. And then Lindsay said, and she said, I ate a piece straight out of the fridge cold. She said, that is the best fried chicken I've ever had in my life. But it's not just fried chicken, it is Nashville hot chicken, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you're saying that's the best fried chicken you've had, that's like a different category. Well, you don't, here's the thing. When I finished frying it and I put it in the fridge, I had not yet, it had uh, like the spicy stuff in the, the dredge and in, like coating on it, but it did not have it, the sauce on it, which is a separate step that you do after you take it off the grill. But I didn't want the sauce to make the, the breading soggy mm. for leftovers. So they just ate it just to straight up chicken. So it kind of comes across like a Bojangles like Cajun chicken, which is really good. I and mean, what did, did you, you deep fry it? Yeah, yeah, I or fried pan, it. Pan I, fried I, it? I, I fried it in like, you know, like a three quarters inch of, uh, of peanut oil in a, in a big pan. Okay. So yeah, just like, you know, four minutes, turn it, that kind of thing. Anyway, that's just what, I mean, I can't, going. I can't talk about everything that much, but that was a sore spot because your wife was upset about it. Um, I'm gonna just read. The, she you, wasn't upset. You might have to decipher what it is I bought because I'm literally reading word for word the name of the title on Amazon. Okay. Kohler K40090 Reveal Quiet Clothes with Grip Tight Bumpers Round Front Toilet Seat White. Round Front Toilet Seat. I buy a toilet seat for my, my boys' bathroom because oh. they're so rough on everything. They and broke it? They broke the or toilet they, seat. Or they permanently stained it. I think they sat it. too hard on it or maybe they peed too hard on it. Oh God. And it was the kind of thing that 
two boys in a bathroom with a broken toilet seat turned into two boys in a bathroom with a toilet with no seat for longer than we should have let that happen. The seat wasn't even on no there? No seat. So, so they only peed in it? Yeah, and they came to my bathroom to take a dump. Okay. <laughs> or the guest bathroom to take a dump. <laughs> And it took about six weeks for me to get tired of that. Oh gosh, did you think about getting a, a cushiony one? That like, it's got little holes that- Well, it's interesting it? that you asked this because when the toilet seat came and I said, hey Shep, hey, come here. I'm gonna show you how to install a toilet seat. This is something somebody, you should know, you know, learn from your dad. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing he said, he was like, did you get a good one? <laughs> I'm just like, what, what do you, is that, was he thinking about the soft kind? Cause I was like, what do you mean? He was like, you know, like a good one. I had a babysitter who had a good one. Old people, they'll have a cushiony one and it's. Sometimes they got carpet you, on them. Oh my, yes. It, well, it's the most unsanitary no, here, here's, thing I've ever heard of. I think you're getting something confused. What, the top has carpet A lot of it. old people, they'll, they'll put like a, a crocheted toilet lid cover. Um, but it's not on the seat itself. It's just decorative. I think that was a fad. I don't. I think that the soft toilet then, seat is asking too much out of life. If you have a crocheted lid and you lift that thing up, you should be expecting a. It's vinyl, I believe. It's yeah. like plasticky, but it, and then it has like styro, like my um, grandma had foam one. inside of it. And when you sit on it the first time, it's like, oh, this is pleasant. But then it starts to sprout leaks, and when you sit on it, it air little pinholes of air will just come out around your, your well, hips. It feels good though. But then you sink down into hardness. Well, old people have it, I think, because as you get older, you lose muscle and butt fat bony. and you got a, a bony butt. So I don't have a bony butt yet. I will, and at that point I'll get a soft one. Shepard will be happy. Golden Let's saffron, finest pure premium all red saffron threads, grade A plus, highest grade saffron for tea, paella, rice, desserts, no artificial, no preservatives, two grams. So so this is uh, it's another cooking expedition I've been on. Yeah, you a, a lot of cooking stuff. I'll also just throw in. Big paella. 22 inch carbon steel paella pan, 55 centimeters, bought at the same time. 22 inch? Yeah, so. A two foot diameter? It's a very large paella pan. Now, as you know, out in my grill area, uh, that just made an appearance on uh, fancy fast food because we, we, we smoked uh, some stuff for the McRib. I didn't watch it. I wasn't. You in may it. not have seen, but I have a big. I got a big burner out there because I wanted the option to make bi a big paella for a lot of people who come over when the pandemic pandemic is over. Right? Predicament. <laughs> the pan predicament. Uh, predicament. And uh, but again, <laughs> I'm it. getting my recipes on lock before I share them with my friends. So I'm testing them on my family. And so. You, uh, you, you, you're really fixating on the hosting component and I think that is driving your your culinary. You know me, I like to create experiences. That's why I did the game night and I love, I, I, I wanna, and I, and I like the idea of like, hey everybody, we're gonna have this giant ass paella that I made. And or, I like to experience things. Right. Uh, you like to eat things that other people make for you. <laughs> I, yeah. Listen, so do I. I like to be Nothing served. wrong with I like, that. I like to be served. Um, and as you know, as we talked about on the show, saffron is something that you and I both didn't really like. Uh, when they made some kind of saffron dish on the show, I talk, we talked about how it tasted like pool water. What I learned is that a little bit, I mean, I mean a tiny bit of saffron goes a very long way. I used this tiny little pinch, like four or five little strands of this stuff in, yeah, a, they in like a 14 inch pipe. It, co it comes in threads, is that what you've read in the? Yeah, 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 threads. Like, is it a plant, or is it is it? Well, it's not a animal. Well, because it's golden and it comes in threads, I start to think of it as like something that Rumpelstiltskin would fabric. It's like that little little threads that long. Anyway, it's fabric. I'm on the saffron train because I know that a little bit goes a long way, and it just my first paella, uh, chicken, and also I got like the I got rice and um, uh, chorizo from Spain, <laughs> and and it, it's absolutely. Heavenly, I mean, you're gonna love it. You're gonna absolutely love it. I'll do it for you in the 22 inch pan, which I still haven't used because I used a small pan because I'm not gonna feed my entire family with a 22 inch paella. That's crazy. It's a bit. It gets a bit frou frou, like the like the fried chicken, like, like paella frou frou. But when you're like, I got the I got the thing from Spain, and, and you know, it's you if got, you're gonna do it, I, do it let, right. Let, let, let me let me, let me, if I may. You may when when you're when you're hosting people. 
hold, hold some of the details close to the vest, okay? Because you run the risk Oh, I'm of, not gonna tell them what's in if, it. Yeah, if you're like, well, you know, I got this one. It's kinda like. Well, I'm not gonna use that voice if I say it. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, you just gotta be, you gotta, you well, gotta give them a little bit. If people are really interested, then you can give them a little bit more. But don't just give them everything like, well, I sourced this from Spain and I sourced this well, from Switzerland and Rumpelstiltskin himself, you wait, I got him on the phone. You wait until you taste. I, I, you wait until you taste the Spanish chorizo. I, oh gosh. I mean, I'm thinking about it right now, my mouth is watering. Let them, yeah, let us taste it and then see how much of the details we want. Here's something a little less exciting. I mean, I got a list too. Uh, we'll see it with this really quick, and then we'll hit yours. I'm, I'm trying to. Th I mean, you got four things. I'm trying to, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, I got to kind of get they're, through. But they're, but they're big. Uh, AC Infinity Multi Fan S7-P Quiet Dual 120 millimeter AC powered fan with speed control. UL certified for receiver, DVR, PlayStation, Xbox component cooling. See if you can figure that one out. Well, you got a cooling fan, so you. For what, for DVR cooling? So, you know, I've got my media set up outside, <laughs> right? I, I showed you that too, and you, you, got, you okay, saw, we yes. watched one little YouTube video out there. Yes, I just yes. gave you a taste. Yes, yes. Um, but the receiver, and I don't know, I didn't set it up, I got a guy to do it, but the components inside the cabinet, which is outside, got so hot that I like opened the thing and like a heat wave like, burst into my face and I touched the side of it. I was like, man, I could fry an egg on this thing. That seems like it could burn my house down. You make paella on it. And uh, so then I started trying to figure out okay. what the solutions were. And so I bought these cooling fans. So it's kind of like a fan that would be in a, um, a computer that you would yeah. build. You can put them like in the door or you can, what I did is I made it where the door is a little bit open up with some spacers so that there's a big crack all along the sides of the door and then I put the fans in the front and they, some of them pull air in and some push it out so it brings in the outside air and circulates it. And it also, this thing comes with a, a, a thermometer that, a thermostat essentially, that you can set at what temperature the cabinet has to get to before they come on. I mean, of course this exists, but I didn't know about this world of fans. And you now were able I to do. put this in yourself? Oh, it's simple. Huh. Super simple. It, that reminds me, when I look back through the Amazon history, I started realizing how much crap Lincoln has bought, like he bought he bought fans, all types of computer stuff. Like he built a computer. Last Christmas he got a computer, and then over the over the course of quarantine he has disassembled and rebuilt the entire computer. That's what you got to do. And he was like, you know what? I shouldn't have bought that pre-made thing. You got to build it yourself. You know they they're on Discord shaming each other about if they built their own computer or not. So now, but I did. I like the fact that like this was his project and he was figuring stuff out. You know he. He fried his motherboard because of the he di he didn't use proper techniques to to troubleshoot something. So, there's so much LED situation inside of a computer these days. Just for show, right? Just for show, right? And he couldn't get all that to work, and he fried his motherboard by touching the wrong thing without with it with it being plugged in. You gotta have like gloves on. When you know you what? He stuff. he learned his lesson, and but, he, the, but he, then he bought another motherboard. Yeah, but with his money. Oh. Uh, all of this stuff is with his money. Oh. But it is through our Amazon account. And yeah, he had he went in debt to get another motherboard. But I was like, you know what? He needs to experience the sinking feeling of investing his emotional and physical energy into a project and then totally tanking it and then having to hmm. having to figure out how to how to start over. That's an important life lesson. I could see that I mean, the look on his face. I was like, you were there when it happened. This is a good moment. No. Well, I got home from work and he was like, he had this, Christy told me you should go in and talk to Lincoln. And he's just in his room with like, just like staring dejected. Mm. And he like confessed what had happened. And then I helped, I, I taught him how to do some, some Googling in order to really figure out what was wrong and what needed to be fixed. Like, so I didn't do it for him, but I, I helped him figure out how to develop you, a plan of action. You helped him Google. I helped him, <laughs> I helped him Google the right thing. Um, There's an art to it. So I'm I'm sifting through all these computer parts to get to my thing, and uh, okay, I guess in reverse chronological order. I incidentally, I feel like I've I've talked about all of these things in one place or another because I buy so few things. Have I talked about my ultra slim wallet? 
slim minimalist front pocket you RFID to me about it. blocking I leather wallets for men, women, is what it says. Huh. I got it, I got it in my pocket. I, I had a slim wallet for over 10 years and the whole thing was falling apart to the point where it had a little plastic thing that you could see the driver's license through it just like this new one has, but it had frayed open. So every time I reached to get my wallet, sometimes that little hard piece of plastic would wedge itself in between behind my fingernail. How many? Which is a form of torture. How long did you deal with that? Uh, probably six years. <laughs> like n no, no exaggeration, my wallet was at that level of dilapidation for six years. And you know what? I looked on, an ad came up on Instagram for an ultra thin wallet. Yep, they knew and you I was wanted like, one. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna buy it. And I'm gonna tell Rhett I did it and he's gonna be so happy for me. I actually clicked on an ad and bought something. Something I'd never do, ever. Yeah. So I did that, I dropped like $23 on this wallet and um, never got it. Oh, I about to say, because th this is Amazon, yeah. so you had to go. I never got it. And this is, a, and so you like got the, one like it the, on Amazon. I got one like it. I was like, you know what, this freaking wallet's never coming. I emailed them and told them, I want my money back. Yeah. Or give me the wallet. No response. It just they just it just fizzled out. The one time I take a risk to buy something based on an ad in an impulse kind of way, it blows up in my face. That happened to me one time this year. I, I think it has it's something to do with. It's the only time I bought something. Sometimes it, I don't know what the standards are for getting something on Instagram ads, but the process. And again, this is one of the reasons it's that like so many people buy things on Amazon from a Kickstarter. Yeah. It's like, well, we're not really making the wallet. They yet. haven't gotten their stuff together always. Uh, they haven't always gotten their stuff together. So yet. I got I got this wallet, and um, I've been carrying it in my in my uh, computer bag more than I've been carrying it in my back pocket. It's not slim enough for you. It's not. It is. It is a bit bigger. Hmm. So I'm not. I'm not too happy. My wallet that. is from an Instagram ad as well. I've shown it to you. I'm, I'm not going into my Instagram I'm purchases. Sure that could be a whole different this. episode because I am that guy who is susceptible to advertising. So I bought that. Bought a wallet. I have so I you know what I have so much anxiety around buying stuff. Like I I just I was mad about that wallet, man. I feel like you know what, learn my lesson. Never buying anything again. <laughs> like literally that's how I felt. And then I like had to work up the energy to buy that wallet. It's like, man, maybe it's just a sign well, I'll keep we'll, my old wallet. We'll, we might get into the psychology of that in a little bit, but we do need to uh, take a break and make some money so that I can continue to buy things on Amazon. And ironically, uh, we're gonna talk about amazon.com slash mythical because <laughs> okay, yeah, we are. that is uh, our Amazon store where we sell things that are exclusive to Amazon, so a bunch of apparel. Check it out. We also have our entire grooming line over there and there's a whole section, we got it divided by section, where there's a section called music and media where you can go over there and you can buy like Tour Mythicality special, our books, it's all in one place, so convenient. I'm crying over Check here. Check it right? out, yeah, because you spent money on a wallet. Lando asked me this morning, he's like, Dad, I need some more mythical pomade. The other stuff that you got me doesn't work. And of I'm course like, it doesn't, yeah. Of course, here I am admitting that I give my son other stuff, but we just had some extra stuff laying around in 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 that little window before I could get more mythical pomade home. And he insisted, he says, I can't use it, it doesn't meet my standard, only mythical pomade meets Lando's standard. That's right. And my standard, by the way. Get it at amazon.com slash mythical. Mythical pomade, the perfect pomade for 11 year olds. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Um, some of the, I'm just gonna, you know, I've already told the story about this. I'm just, it's worth mentioning though. United Ortho Short Air Cam Walker Fracture Boot, large black. We talked about the boot that I got for Locke. Oh, this. fracture boot. It's a fracture boot. Yeah. Was okay. not ever used, by the way. So I have a fracture boot if you're in the, in the, in the market for it. Never used. He tried to use it one time hey, and then the next on. day he was you know okay. What? Let's move on. Uh, metal food grinder attachment for KitchenAid. I stand mixers inc includes two sausage stuffer tubes. Okay, so so I'm 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 losing interest because everything's cooking related. You, this is a sausage maker. Uh, it's a grinder that you put on the KitchenAid. It's, Does it work? Uh, haven't used it yet. You haven't used it. I got it uh, because I want to. Uh, pasteurize my own, pop up. my own meat and grind it so that I can have uh, medium rare and rare burgers and it'd be okay. So you have to oh. like 
you have to like flash boil your your meat to pasteurize it, and you can get like a better cut of meat, and you can grind it, and then you can immediately patty it and grill it. It's quite an experience because you want it to be redder. If it's really good meat, yes. Okay. Um. Now, this this is not going to be In and Out or a Shake Shack. Or... You do not want a pink burger at one of those places. Yeah, but if you want a really good burger, you just go to one of those places. But they're not gonna use the meat that I'm gonna use, buddy roll. <laughs> and you, you know what, It's I, I assume it's not just so you can talk about it. You actually also enjoy the process as well, right? You're not. You're doing this for yourself. I don't just do things <laughs> so I can talk about them. I didn't know we were gonna do this episode. No, I, this is throughout the year I've bought these things because, now, okay, I'm gonna show you a picture. Link, I can't show you the picture because my wife took it. And you may not, you're not gonna appreciate this, but I also got a 30 inch, Steel hand hammered Cantonese wok. 30 inch what, diameter? This wok, it feels much it's bigger than 30 inches. Feet. I think the bottom might be 30 inches. Like you've ever been, have you ever looked in the back of a Chinese restaurant and seen the woks they're cooking on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a wok that is no lie this big and I am gonna also. I could curl up inside of this wok. Yeah, I have to keep it in the attic because I can't find any place big enough to keep it. It's in the attic. Yeah, and there it will stay. Nope, because again, so I'm gonna have like four or five different things I can do for parties. I'm so ready to cook for parties. When the pandi- pandemic, I don't know why I can't say the word. When the pandemic is over, we're gonna have the most kick-ass parties and I'm gonna be catering. That's not how it's gonna work. It's not like one day the pandemic's gonna be over. Well, there's gonna be a point in which we can freely gather without anybody worried about anything. And I mean, I, and I'm just saying that that's gonna happen eventually. Now, I'm going to, and I don't know what my Chinese food recipe is going to be. I've been thinking about something in the Kung Pao space. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna be able to make so much of it that we could have 100 people over and I could feed all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do understand this whole cooped up and not seeing people and then you know, you're channeling what you can learn now into something that can then be a, reach ultimate fruition and it's not later. It, it, the timing of it is the fact that we just finished the outdoor area and I, the only, I, I cared about like the media area with the screen and then the barbecue area, right? Those are the areas that I cared about because this is good, this is my place where I wanted to get it just right. Give, give, give me the next one, is it, is it it's cooking not food. Okay, um, BN Link Compact Outdoor Mechanical Timer 24 BN hour. BN Link what? BN Link. Compact outdoor mechanical timer, 24 hour programmable dual outlet timer. Plug in waterproof, heavy duty, accurate for lamps, outdoor Christmas lights, etc. So, okay, just a, a, a timer. I haven't told you. I don't know if I've told you a about plug. this. A plug. So, one a, of the things. A plug in timer. One of the things that I'm also going to do at the house um, is I'm going to make with my son a cold plunge pool using an old or a brand, actually a new freezer. This might sound dangerous, but uh, if you wanna get a, like a, like, so I'm saying like, if you wanna take an ice bath, if you wanna do what the athletes do. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to like get in the hot tub and then get in, I wanna do the cold, hot, cold, hot plunge thing and just yes. send myself into a euphoric state and then make prophecies. <laughs> um, but it, in order to do that, if you wanna get a plunge pool and you wanna like get a real plunge pool, you're not gonna get out for less than like eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000. I don't wanna spend that kind of money. But what I found- You gotta buy big pots with that money. Is I found a YouTube rabbit hole of these people who are using uh, top, uh, I don't know, top loading? Top loading freezers to create plunge pools. He talking about the type of freezer that like a serial killer would just dump body Bodies parts in. Into. Yeah, but you put your live body in it with water. With the lid up. With the lid up. And if that lid goes down. Well, you can get out. Somebody should be supervising you though. You push I do it. not it recommend, I don't recommend this and this whole, the timer is that you only want to run it because if you, you're gonna put water in there, right? And the timer is gonna run every, like in the middle of the night, it's, it's gonna turn the freezer on to cool the water and then it's gonna turn off because you, you'll just have a block of ice in there and you get where you can monitor the temperature and you get how, based on the weather, you know how long you need to run this thing. And of course, then before you get in it, you unplug it. Even though you silicone seal the inside so that it won't leak, you don't want the freezer to be plugged in when you get into it, you know, electricity is bad. Yeah, Lincoln, uh, Lincoln learned that with his motherboard. Yeah, uh, so anyway, 
It's so, but do you know what happened during the pandemic? F- top loading freezers sold out everywhere. So I got all the ancillary pieces For this to reason? this. Nope, because people are trying to store food. That's a better they're, reason. They're all worried about not having enough, so everybody's like, we gotta get all our meat frozen yes, because that, who knows what's gonna happen. It makes a little more happened. sense, I'm just. Yeah, and so all these top loading freezers that are the right size, literally every big box store that I looked like a couple months ago, completely sold out. They don't know when they were gonna be back in. So you've I haven't got checked the timer. recently. I've, I've got the timer, the sealer, the thermometer. I've got all the ancillary pieces, I just don't have the freezer. So when the freezers are back in stock and they might be, I haven't checked lately, I'm gonna get one. And you can come over and take an ice bath anytime you want. I know you love them. A lot of things uh, sold out because the pipelines are you know, screwy or shut down for, for whatever you know, components of and any number of things. Uh, I was thinking about getting a mountain bike and you, sold out. You, can't, you, cannot buy, you cannot buy a new mountain bike. Because everybody's like, I gotta get outside, I got a yep. bike. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, if you, if you pick a new one, you might be waiting six months, and that's a tenuous. I mean, it could be a year, right? So uh, I didn't order one at all, and now I'm thinking, man, if I'd have ordered one a month, you'd ago, have it now. Well, I wouldn't have it, but I would be a month closer to having it. Just do it, man. Just go for it. You need a new mountain bike. You're doing it all the time now, and your and your boy that you mountain bike with just got like a awesome mountain bike. I know he did. That makes you look bad and weak. So you need to get a good I, mountain bike. I think he is having more fun than me. Yeah. And I, you know, it's not it's not jostling his testicles, his tail as much. Huh. I've still got a hard tail. You got to get soft tails. He's got a he's got a spongy tail. Mm-hmm. You got to be soft on all. Um, you got to be soft on both sides of the bike. I bet you that B one that stung me if I'd have had one. No, you would have gone See, right but under I, it. I I go through all these conversations trying to justify, and then I don't do it. I mean, my my latest purchase, my biggest purchase of the entire year. I've been thinking about for over a year. And I finally pulled the trigger on it because Christy gave me such a hard time. She's like, just get the television. Oh, that's a big television. I so enjoyed it the other night. Watched I got us on it. Yeah, because the not, tele- uh, not us. Not, I didn't watch <laughs> us. I didn't watch Good like Mythical Good Mythical Morning. Morning. I watched the movie Us on it. Um Yeah, I was like, you know, the wall in our entertainment room. It's not, well, I had such, uh, my TV was too small. Too small. I, ne- I didn't say anything about it, but I thought, I thought it a lot. It was dwarfed by the, by the wall and by the couch and everything, it just wasn't proportional. But that, I bought that television for that room. Yeah, that was a good place to watch things. But no, I'm saying I bought the television that was too small, the one that was in oh, there for, oh. for years. You went too small too early. I went too small right from the get-go and then I'm like, I'm, it was, I didn't wanna return it and then I was like, I don't deserve a bigger television even though yeah. this was too small for the room and then I'm like, Every time I watch television, I'm a little mad about yeah. it, but then I, I just can't justify buying one of these bigger televisions. The question you should always be asking about a television is, is this too big, not is this too small? If you're asking is this too small, the answer is yes and you shouldn't buy it. Is this too big? You're in the right place, you're getting close. Yeah, and you know what? I, I, I finally did it. A couple of weeks ago I bought the television and I got the, I got the Apple TV. You know the thing that put it over the edge? Was when when we when at Mike's house, he's got an Apple TV, and I'm like, "What is this? What is this amazing screen uh, image on your screen?" And it's yeah. just a screensaver, like of a city s- slow mo drone footage of flying over Los Angeles, and you can see everything inside of you can see like inside of people's offices. Like I stood in front and of his orifices. television, and I just watched it, and I was like. How do I get one of these? He was like, "Well, it's the screensaver." For <laughs> but it won't TV. work good. It won't look good if it's not 4K. It won't work good. So I backed into getting this big old television, and I, I got to say, we're enjoying it. And I, I, sh- I should have done it years ago. Yeah, think of all, think of all the movies that could have been a little bit bigger. A little bit. You'll bigger. never get that back. Got to go back and watch them all. But I thought about it for a year before I, before I actually. Yeah, I don't typically think that long. I think that might be your issue. You can't, as soon as you think of it, you just gotta do it. <laughs> Latera do it. men's six pack running ankle socks, low cut performance athletic custom cushion tab sock. Okay, so you got some, you got some socks. I pull the trigger on these particular socks quarterly. 
because this is my only way to combat the problem of the missing socks in my family. Uh, now that I've got two boys who are, I mean Locke especially, comes into my room and takes my socks and they typically do not come back. Yeah. These athletic socks that we need for working out or walking or whatever. Yeah. There's just some sort of monster that eats them and so I'd have to like reload six pairs quarterly is the only way to just remain socked in my house. Are you still doing the plan that we talked about a while back that was like they're all the same type and they're all the same color? Uh, cause, I, Cause I've done that for the most part and it, I, I, I love it. And then your kid's socks are different? Uh, Lincoln has the same socks. Yeah. Lincoln and I basically share the socks. Well yeah, that's what me and Locke do. And I'm sure Shepard is getting, he's getting close to do, to being a part of that. Uh, yeah. So they're all the same color. Essentially, yeah, I mean, these are all just white ankle socks. And then we I've got like black crew socks and those are basically the only socks that I you wear. You know what? I actually bought some socks too. Oh. Uh, in preparation for. Uh, is that one of your four? Me and Christy's trip. Actually it's not, no. Oh, look at that. I was yeah. like, I'm not gonna put socks on the list. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Rhett wouldn't like be talking about yeah, something. Yeah, not gonna do that. Like socks. Right. I got some hiking socks, and I got some for me, and I got some for Christy. They kind of matching. She hated them, but I was like, you know, they're they're very functional. Hiking socks are important. They're important. Life board, portable floor to enhance yoga, Pilates, or ballet barre exercise at home on carpet or outdoors. Portable floor. Yeah. So a hard floor to go over carpet, but there's no carpet in your house. This was for my solo trip and any subsequent camping trip. I have to do my back exercises every okay. single morning. And I was like, when I went camping, when I did my solo trip, before this most recent solo trip, I didn't have anything and I, I was out next to Joshua Tree and I found a piece of plywood that someone had put next to a fire and I took that plywood and I did all my back exercises on the plywood. Cause you're having to put your knees and then lay down on the ground. Yeah, I have to do all the stuff that you gotta be on a hard surface. And so it turns out they make this plastic thing that again is for people who are like, I'm gonna go do Pilates in the grass in Central Park. So I wanna have like a, a board to do it or whatever. Um, it rolls up? It's just two pieces that fit together like this, like you know, they kind of come together. Did you use it? Yeah, I used it. It's so, I gotta figure out a better way to travel with it. When I'm doing the solo trip, it was no big deal because there's I got so much room in the car for myself, but. Going, we're going camping with the with the boys soon and I have to take it and I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. You could also use it as a sun shield when you park on the windshield. It's too big. But you can't store it there. Uh, you could strap it to the roof. <laughs> I thought about that, but I got the tent up there and it's just like I gotta put it under it or you something. You know what, put it in the attic underneath that big bowl you bought. <laughs> um, Give me another one. Okay. And then I'll hit you with one. Gacinto men's casual cotton shorts, three quarter jogger capri crop pants, below knee shorts with pockets light gray, 34. Okay, so long shorts. Shorts that go past your knee. Capri pants, I bought capri pants. <laughs> They're called shorts, which helps. But if you wanna call them capri pants, go for it. I, I, just, I like being comfortable. Have you seen wear these? Uh, no, I wear them at the house Do they sometimes. have a drawstring? Or do they kinda cinch at the ends? Or are they just flapping? It's just like sweats. How's and that going for you? They're comfortable. I enjoy them. I, you know, it, as the weather begins to cool down, I, the, I can do my uh, my stretches outside in these. But your calf still stays cool. Yeah, but my knees are very warm. Okay. Uh, next thing I bought was Utopia Care Scissors, silver. Eight ninety nine. Now these things are. Uh, professional grade texturizing scissors with finger inserts. If you have small fingers, you put these finger inserts in there so that it's still tight on your finger. This is a scissor that it only it only cuts half of your whatever's in it. So it's like a thinning shear. Yeah. I've seen Anna use these on both of us. And I was watching her closely and then I'm like, you know what, My I'm cutting my own hair in quarantine and it, it my hair is so thick, I gotta, I gotta up my game, right? So I had to buy some of these. It's a bit scary to use a thinning shear because because you get close to the base and you cut, and it feels like, and then you you cu you cut cut and comb, and then you comb it out, and all of a sudden a huge clump of hair comes out. That's like, I mean, a handful, 
And then you just- You sure you're doing it you right? keep doing it. I mean, your hair looks the same. Well, Anna has now cut my, my hair again in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. So I'm not doing it anymore, but- uh, But you it, already, you can. Oh, it, it definitely helped. Right. But it takes guts, man. It takes approximately- I wouldn't do it. The same amount of guts it takes for me to purchase a wallet or a television or anything really <laughs> to cut, to cut, to thin out my own hair. Um, but now you're ready for any situation in which, and you could cut my hair. You used to cut my hair for a very long time. I'd gladly cut it. Are you, is that, are you making a suggestion? No, 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 not, nothing. Um, what else did you, did you buy? Well, I will just say quickly, I'm not gonna read the whole thing because it's too long, but I did buy uh, phone screen protectors. I, told, I think I talked about this earlier. I just found that the screen protectors and the phone cases that you get when at your provider, like if you are like an AT&T, Verizon, whatever, and you buy that stuff along with your phone, you're gonna pay really, really high prices for all that stuff. Like one of those glass, like tempered glass screen protectors will be like 35 bucks if you buy it uh, at the store, but you can get a three pack on Amazon. Let's see, what is the price of this thing? Three pack for 15.99. See for 16 bucks you get three, Three. This is something that I know. I mean, for, for for years, I will be in a place looking for something and I'll be on my phone looking at it from somewhere else just because I'm like, man, I I could either have it right now or I could probably get it for 10% cheaper online or get a slightly different one or at least feel validated in my purchase. And then I'll do that and even when it comes to like phone cases or screens, I'll go through all of that trouble and then you know what I'll do? I won't buy anything. Uh, that's like watch. That's like getting ready to watch Netflix, and you don't end up watching anything. Yeah, you just look at the menu. Right. Don't be that. I mean, I don't have a. Th- there's no pr- screen protector on my phone. I mean, there's. I do have a case, but I don't have a screen. I got protector. that case for seven dollars. Seven dollar case. I got. It seems just as good as anything. I got this screen protector for zero dollars because I don't have one. That's even even better deal. Exactly. C Sense Air Horn Jumbo Eight Ounce. Eight ounce air horn, what do you mean? Like, so like a can, canned air? Yeah, this is from my my rap career that's on the side. Mark, 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 mark. Uh, I got this. Emergency horn for boating. When I went on my solo trip, it's just in a general sort of survival thing. Also, it's been shown to be effective in scaring away mountain lions or bears, but I also got bear spray, which incidentally, you cannot get on Amazon because they will not ship it to me in California. And I don't know if that's a state thing. Hmm. I mean, they sell it on Amazon. So the only way to get bear spray is to buy it from a a, a retail store like REI and then go pick it up. Huh. I got that too, but that's not one of my purchases. So did you walk around with a belt with bear spray and a horn on? on, on? I didn't end up uh, hiking, I couldn't, the place that I needed it, I couldn't get into because the national forests were closed. But I didn't know that was gonna be the case before because of the fires. Did you blast the horn just to test it? No, because I feel like that's like a fire extinguisher, and I, you know, yeah, yeah. There's, it's 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 limited it's, pressure. It's eight ounces. You yeah, don't want to. I don't know wanna, how many seconds that translates into. Yeah, what's the blast? You should have bought two just so you'll know how long you have to blast. Um, along that same line. The the next three purchases, which I'll go through quickly, were all for my solo trip. Atomic Bear Paracord Bracelet, two pack. Atomic Bear? So that's just the brand, but this is basically a little bracelet that's got uh, a fire starter built into it and also like a uh, paracord, you know? It's just like, so you're completely ready for anything. This is this was when I was gonna, like, if I was you, gonna what go What do you mean, what would you use with a paracord? Like a parachute string? Having rope, I've been told, is very important when you're in a survival situation. I don't exactly know what I would use it for, but I think if my life depended on it, I would figure it out real quick. Apparently rope is very important because it's in all these survival so you, things. But you don't even know how you would use it. You bought a bracelet. I bought a bracelet that was a fire starter. Yeah, and it also has a loud whistle and an emergency knife all built into just the bracelet. I didn't know what kind of stuff I was gonna get into and it was real cheap. Also got a 6.5 foot pop-up changing shower privacy tent, portable utility shelter, room for camping, shower, toilet, bathroom, trade shows, beach spray tan pop-up. Beach spray tan like pop-up. Green. Yeah. Okay, so basically a cur- a shower curtain for camping. Yeah, because I was gonna be taking showers and pooping just next to my car and did I didn't you, know where it was gonna go. How did that go? 
I never pooped or showered in a place where somebody could see me. So I just showered and pooped in the open. So you didn't use it. I opened it up one time to be like, let's see what this feels like. <laughs> okay. I'm bringing it on our trip. Did you start a fire with your? Uh... No, I couldn't, the fires were illegal. You couldn't start fires. See, and I don't like being this guy. Like what I'm doing to you right now, I do to myself and it's, it's, it's not, nothing good comes of it. Like whenever I'm, I have to shop for something or whenever I find myself shopping, I'm making a decision as if I have to defend myself to somebody. Like I'm treating you the way I feel like someone will treat me with every single purchase. Like I'm gonna be grilled and have to justify everything. Seriously. Like that's how I interact. I, but I, you're justifying I, it to yourself. But that's not, that's not how it feels in my brain. It actually feels like I'm gonna be, um, What's the word where somebody in in a courtroom is asking a lot of questions? Interrogated. Yeah, it's that's interesting really, though. That's more of a like a, a criminal. It's interesting because. But yeah, that's how we're, it's we're, an inner critic thing. Well, uh, again, the ever and here I am putting it on you. The ever teased enneagram episode. We're we're both self pres. I'm a self pres three. You're self pres one. And I think that's one of the reasons that, I mean, I'm also an impulse buyer, but what I do is I tend to envision a scenario and I think about all the things that I need to have and be prepared for. And then I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna be like camping next to somebody. I'm gonna need this, I got. I just bought this toilet that it's basically this bag I'm gonna take a shit in. Uh, I don't want somebody to watch me do this. I wonder if there's some sort of privacy thing. And yeah. then all of a sudden there it is for 20 bucks and you just buy it. Um, and the fact that you didn't use it is not, it. it you don't, it doesn't make you feel bad about the purchase. I want to have everything, I wanna be completely prepared. We're going camping in a couple of weeks with our kids and we're gonna be on the road for a few days. And I know that they're gonna want to, I mean, I, I, you're taking a van that has a toilet in it. Yeah, it is. Uh, but let's just, and, but you're not gonna want everybody taking craps in your toilet, right? That's a conversation when, we need to have, yes. When, when they can take a crap in a bag that I can just throw into the trash somewhere, that's probably preferable. But I mean, my kids don't wanna take a crap. I might take a crap in front of you and your kids. I got no shame. That's a conversation we need to have too. But the kids don't wanna do that. And so I've got a privacy thing for them. Here you go. I have an entire van. So I, I am loosening up and making some purchases. I mean, I'm, re I'm renting this freaking van because I'm committed to van life. I did just purchase, my most recent purchase was a the smallest Nespresso machine that they have. Like, you know, like it. Those, you, hold on, you have like a really nice coffee machine. Whenever we go somewhere, I always get anxious about what kind of coffee machine they're gonna have at the Airbnb. Last, when I rented the the van for me and Christy, one of the things that I got excited about was like, comes with an espresso machine. I did, did the tour of the van and I didn't see the Nespresso machine. I, I asked him, I was like, where's the Nespresso machine? He's, oh, I gotta go get it from in the house. He almost forgot to put it in there. I was like, dang, son. How big is it? It's um, it's like this big. How many inches is that? So like eight? Eight inches by four inches. And you just put the Nespresso pod, just a little bit of, it didn't work. It didn't work on our trip. I'm like, this is not gonna happen again. Coffee is one of the key components of camping and van life. So I'm gonna have one that is a travel size that I can take anywhere I need to go. Any Airbnb, any type of thing. So yeah, I, so I, 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 I got one Is that one, one of your four? No, it's not. Well, that that and the, t really? that, yeah, it is one of my four. It is one of my four. Oh, it is one of your four. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not one of my four, no. Because I, when I searched, I went back further. And I thought we were just going for weird stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't have to be weird. But literally, I haven't purchased much more. But I did purchase this. Fisker's 28 inch bypass lopper, black slash orange. What does that do? It cuts limbs. You know, my pomegranate tree got all out of hand last year and it, and it had pomegranates all over it and so I didn't wanna trim it. And I was like, now that there's not pomegranates on it, I won't feel guilty trimming her back. How many pomegranates did, you, pomegranates did you eat? Not enough. That's why I wanted to trim it back before a lot of them grew this year and I felt guilty about not eating all the pomegranates. Well, you could bring some to me. We like yeah. pomegranates. I made a lot of pomegranate jam. You could be the pomegranate guy. That's of course a lie. 
You yeah, I could have pomegranate. It's not I, you don't have, have to have cook a, anything. You just pick them, put them I in a bag, a, and bring them to people. I can have a pomegranate pop up. Yeah, and it's just pomegranates, pomegranates in the raw. I love a good pomegranate, but when there's that many, you have to give them away. Yeah, they just rot it on the tree. Yeah, that's very sad. Because I'm yeah, that's why I got a lopper. I'll bring you a succulent barbecue, and you can pay me in pomegranates. This thing could effortlessly like lop off a pinky. Oh yeah, there's so much a leverage th- in a those thumb. things. A thumb, like oh, it could yeah. take off a thumb easy. Yeah, like I could lop off the end of your nose. Well, that would be very easy. In your sleep, you could do that with those scissors you bought. You take off half of the tip of my nose, though. Half of it would be there because it's thinning. I mean, I paid twenty six dollars for this thing, and I've only used it. I've only used it that one time. There's a couple of things I might want to lop, and now I got something. I'm gonna rifle through a few. I got the Timber Ridge Zero Gravity Chair oversized recliner. That was for trying to connect with aliens. We already talked about that. Um, I had some uh, beans on toast in, you know, just for breakfast, and I and I took a picture for Instagram, and a bunch of people told me that I had the wrong kind of beans, and they were like, "If you want to do it the way the Brits do it, you need to get Heinz baked beans." in the turquoise basically pack. So you bought that? Uh, so I bought that pack of six, and while I was buying that, uh, next to it, it said people also bought uh, an AirPod Pro case that was the can of beans, so I bought that as well. You bought beans, and then you saw people also bought an iPod, what? Uh, uh, AirPod Pro case Oh, for AirPods. The ear, the ear, things. That is a Heinz baked bean can shape that keeps your, is a place to keep your, your AirPods. Wow, talk about an upsell. Yeah. Probably had, that probably had to cost four times as much as the beans. Uh, no, it was like, it's rubber, it's like seven bucks. Huh, oh yeah, it just goes over the case. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this, I got a glow in the dark spill proof uh, urinal for men, screw cap plastic male urinal, portable urinal. Where do you keep that? Uh, By your bed? It's it, it's it basically is a jug with a glow in the d- uh, dark top that you piss in, so you don't have to well, get out of your tent at night. When you have to wake up and pee, or get up in the morning and you're super cold and you don't want to get out of your tent, you just piss in this uh, oh. this container. It's revolutionary. I'll, I'm taking it on the camping trip. You can't use it, but you can watch me. No. Um, Do you ever think about just inserting it before you went to sleep, and then you wouldn't even have to wake up? <laughs> It'd be like a giant plastic sleeping condom. <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> you think about that? I didn't. Two piece pack portable bidet. Uh, that's just uh, like what you. I know you've got one of those. Oh, you yeah. actually have a nicer one. I've got a little squeeze one. Again, that was. Yeah, I got the. I got. Didn't the know tu- what I was going to run into one. out there. When I use the tushy one, you can you can't use it, but you can watch. Um, a lot of people ask me questions about this because my wife tweeted a picture of me earlier this year, uh, or she just she basically just tweeted the picture of my tank top that I was wearing. It was the Love Turnal. 90s tank tops for men, summer tees, boys, graphic novelty, sleeveless athletic, tropical workout, crew neck shirts, fit tank tops L, which looks like this. Uh, the titles are just ridiculous. So it's a tank top with a, with a, with a, the one I got was the lion face on it. Why did you get that? Uh, a lot of people worried about me and thought that I, this was a new fashion statement that I was trying to make. And the reality is, is I got this because I thought we were gonna do more of those sketch, those little TikToks with Terry, the stepdad, and I thought it would be funny if he always had a funny tank top on. And then we never did it again. And then we haven't done it again. I have that tank top and also have one with an American flag on it. Also have one with a, ca- a cat in space on it. I have all three of those. You should bring those into the office because they could be used in a character sense. If you keep them at home, it means that you're grown attached to them. Um, I found a good deal on some Puma Men's Roma Basic Fashion sneaker sneakers, uh, size 13. As you know, typically the shoe, the the low top white shoes that I wear all the time are those are Puma Romas. Okay. And I was like, I like these so much. They're getting kind of old. I kind of want to have like the day I throw these out, I want to already have the pair like sitting in my closet. And I found a deal on them for like 40 bucks. So I was like. I had, they're still in the box because I haven't completely worn out the other ones, but I, I'm ready for them. So this is like, this is like I get this from my mom. My mom, the way she organized our kitchen cabinets was as if it was a grocery store. Yeah. So like you'd finish one bottle of Penrose sausage and there would be another one behind it. It's interesting because I would think that you would not want the same thing again. 
again, it's like you're enticed by getting something new and getting something different. They're just so comfortable. I just like it the prof- I like the profile and they're so comfortable. I was like, I haven't found a better a better low top. Except for like all birds, of course. Well yeah. They got a good they got a very comfortable low top. I wear those a lot as well. <laughs> can't can't wear them uh, exclusively though. Uh, but I also got Reebok's men's oh. Royal Astro Storm walking shoe. <laughs> Have you seen my Reebok walking shoes? No. Well, you ought to see me walk in them. I don't wanna see you walk in them. We were doing so much walking at the beginning of the pandemic and I was not happy with the way my feet were feeling. And uh, I was like, what is a walking shoe? I've heard old people talk about these. I found them, Reeboks apparently, makes them. Gosh. Astro Storm. You know what else I got? What? This was a wreck. This is like early, I mean a recommendation. This purchase wasn't like a wreck with a W. Yeah. The OXO Good Grips Any Angle Broom, silver, with a, with a dustpan. I love this thing so much I made it a wreck in effect back in April, I think. So I'm, I'm all the way back there, because that, that's a few things I bought. I bought this broom, still use it. I actually use this broom so much I broke it. And then I had to, like the, it has a, like a bolting mechanism that then will, it'll swivel, because it's like any angle broom, and like, it'll click, 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 and then you can like sweep under stuff. And I used it so much, that clicker thing, the internal mechanism, I broke it. And instead of buying a new one, I disassembled it and put a bolt, a nut and bolt in there and I fixed it. I made it stronger than it was originally. I'm still using it. Observation. Very nice. OXO is a nice brand for a, for a broom. So far with the exception of the uh, Nespresso machine. And maybe the TV. Okay, yeah, the TV. Uh, we got a broom, Everything that got some loppers, and I got some hair loppers. Everything that you got, you, you got off Amazon is there's a, it's very utility. In fact, three out of four are tools, right? Yeah. Uh, so it feels like while, I mean a lot of the things that I bought were based on something I was going to do, it definitely feels like I'm buying a lot of things that bring me joy and pleasure. Yeah. And you're buying things that you think that there is a very specific use for that you that you can justify. Easily justifiable, but the broom does bring me pleasure. I mean, I just, <laughs> I just, I just use it to sweep, I mean. But I, you really enjoy sweeping. I like, yeah, I like it. But you know, I mean, there's some deeply rooted things here. I, I just think that I, growing up there was this scarcity. Now I'm not saying you grew up rich or you grew up, you weren't spoiled and you weren't spending money left and right. I, I know that's not how you were raised, but th- I think f- for me there was this, uh, there was this knowledge of scarcity, like oh my gosh, it's like we. Well, I mean, we weren't we weren't poor, but things were tight, and like I had this heightened sense of that. So it's like every single thing that I would purchase or ask for as a kid, I just I just had this real need to justify it yeah. because I would feel like, you know, if if I get this GI Joe mobile command center for Christmas, I mean, how much less money is that for like use with something else? I, my mom never t- talked to me about any of this stuff, but it was just something that I- You interpreted. In- internalized yeah. and interpreted my situation as I don't wanna be the reason that we go broke. And I think that that's kinda, that's, that's stuck with me. And it's, it's not, it's not fun. Well, I think that, at this point, I mean, because my mom, what my mom used to tell me. But I could buy stuff now. And my mom used it, to tell me, well, I hope you make a lot of money when you grow up. Like that's, that's what she would say to me all the time because the way that I would spend money as a kid, like again, my parents, my, my dad had a good job and we were well taken care of. I mean, still definitely very much in the middle class, but we, we, we were, yeah. you know. The interesting thing was they didn't buy me a lot of things, but what they would do is they would give me money for Christmas or something like that, and then what I would do is I would immediately spend all of it, right? Yeah. I would say, okay, you gave me you know, $50 for Christmas or whatever, all right, let's go to Brindle's. I'm gonna spend every bit of it. Like, why wait? 
Yeah, I'm I not, had a I had a jar, and I'm not, and I wasn't, so I wasn't a saver. I'm not, I'm, I, you know, I, I've had to be very disciplined about saving as an adult. But, um, so that was my disposition already. But I do think, and again, and th- that's how that, and it is a it 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 can I think simply just be a personality thing because when I look at my three kids, like Lincoln is that way, like he will not, he never has money. Like the moment he gets money, it's gone, and. Lando will save up money. I had a jar and I would like meticulously roll up my cash and my my coins in it and I would say I, I could buy this but I don't know, I probably something else will come along. I'm just gonna save it to some, something else that like I really gotta get and I would just, I would look at the jar and feel good. You know, sense of security. Security, yeah. Um, yeah, but Lincoln's definitely not that way and it has, and, but, um, Lily somewhere in the middle, and Lando is 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 more like me. But there's so a lot of it's indi- is personality based. And I know. I mean, I'm sure there's some. Too. There's. I mean, because there, uh, there. I'm sure there's something psychological, because I, I, I do impulse buy things, and I take comfort in opening something up, like seeing a box when I get home from work, seeing a box that was delivered from Amazon, and seeing that it's got you your know, name my on name it. on it. Yeah, that means it's for me. It's exhilarating, and sometimes I'm like, I don't even remember what I ordered. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying it's like, <laughs> and so I know that there's something potentially potentially negative about that process as well. But I think that the overarching thing for me is neither of us make uh, big purchases. Like, if we're gonna make a big purchase, like we're gonna do this thing on, on the house. And when I say big purchase, like me and you don't buy expensive sports cars. We don't have a, we don't buy like boats or something. I'm not saying we would never buy a boat or something like that if we, if the opportunity presented itself, but we don't spend a lot, of, we don't buy big ticket items. In fact, we, we sometimes we had, don't because we didn't, like we, when we started our careers, uh, when we were on campus, staff of Campus Crusade, like we were making very little money. Like our early marriage, both of us had the same salary uh, I mean, it's, I'll just say what it was because I remember it. We 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 raised uh, forty two thousand dollars a year. That was that was the salary. And you know, in North Carolina, fifteen years ago, forty two thousand dollars a year. Uh, it's not a lot of money for a family with a couple of kids, right? Like you you have to you have to budget and you have to kind of think about what you're buying. And I think that we've taken that mentality and we've as we've made more money, we've still maintained what, again, We sometimes we have to ask our accountant like, can you tell us how we're doing with our money? And they're like, you guys are both very conservative because you don't spend a bunch of money all at once. Like, yes, there's a bunch of items on this list, but for me, I feel this freedom to spend 10, 20, 30 dollars here and there on this this kind of steady stream of pleasurable items for myself yeah. because I'm not dipping in and going out and buying like a $100,000 sports car or something like that. I don't do that. Um, so I feel like I'm not being irresponsible, but I honestly, I get like, I get a lot of pleasure out of these things. Like when that giant walk shows up and I think about what I'm gonna do in it and the experiences that it will translate into, yeah. like it brings me a lot of joy. And so I tr- I try not, but n- listen, it's a privilege to be able to buy the amount of stuff that I'm talking about. I understand that I have a lot of money relative to a lot of people, and so I can freely buy these smaller ticket items without really thinking about the overall impact. It's, I'm in a privileged position. And I know a lot of people out there do not have the means to do that. Um, but what I'm getting at is you do, <laughs> right? If, if everything's 50-50, I, I've, you I, do have I've the means. I've loosened up some, yeah. uh, I mean, Actually buying the television, and it was like yeah. you know what once once I actually made the, I clicked, purchase, then I was like you know what? I'm looking I can't wait for this thing to to show up. And you haven't felt guilty about it at all. No, so I I think that's good. Yeah, it's not like every time I go in that room, I mean I would come down, in the mornings, for the first couple of mornings, and you know I don't have to walk through that room to go make my coffee. But yeah, I would kind of go. I would take go a into, detour. I would I take a detour and I go in the room and I just look at the television. I mean, it would be off. The screensaver wouldn't even be on. After an hour, I think that turns off. And, and yes, yeah, so I I would look at the the blank, black, off television, and I would, I'd I'd experience a little happiness. 
and then I'd go make my coffee. Well, think about if you had other things. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a walk. Uh, no, you you have you have definitely changed uh, a lot uh, in, in that regard. I, I, I've still got like ten things I gotta get. I gotta get through. I you gotta, have to get. Okay. I gotta get through my list, man. <laughs> I, 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 people wanted it. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm I'm done with my list. Daryl Lee Original Black Licorice, pack of two, best black licorice that I have found. I've tried a lot. It's from Australia, you only got two. It's a pack of two, but there were many in well, the pack. Lots of little pieces in there. So soft, it's great. It's got a great rich flavor. Sensual, sensual massage oil with relaxing lavender almond oil and jojoba for men and women. Well, that's okay. Keep going. Let's just skip that one. Um, Summit mosquito dunks. Twenty dunks. Mosquito dunks. This is a little donut that you can throw in standing water and it will prevent mosquitoes from making eggs in there. This is when they were doing construction on the house and they had to dug the pool out and it rained and there was just stagnant water. Oh. Had to dunk those mosquitoes. I Did had that to work? Dunk on those mosquitoes. Well, I mean, I didn't see any babies. Purea chest rub. Feel instantly better when you rub this aromatic blend of peppermint, eucalyptus, tea tree, and lavender on chest or under the nose. Okay, so vapor rub. It's a natural vapor rub. I use it in the morning before I do like my stretches and, and, and my meditation because I have a deviated septum and it helps open things up. XJS Metal Compression Spring Silver Tone, 40 pieces. Another item along with this is the Baigu 120 piece wood square blocks, one inch blank wooden cubes. This is an art project that uh, Shepard and I started and did not finish. Um, wood blocks? Shepard and I had the idea to create a Fibonacci sequence sculpture, which was based, it, it, you know, some, you can do the Fibonacci sequence and you can do it like a top down view of the spiral and it's got the square block, the, the, the rectangular blocks that are the right yeah. proportions. Okay. And we were gonna do different colors and make like a full size thing where all these little wood blocks are on springs and so you can touch it and it'll shake but they're all, it's the Fibonacci, me and Shepard are kinda like, we have a connection over the Fibonacci sequence. We like once tried to find one that was in a park somewhere and I he's remember, fascinated yeah. by it. Uh, so we did, we painted all the blocks but then we ran out of one thing and we had to stop. So the whole thing is like in a box, ready to be picked up at some point, probably when he's 30. Okay. Black Calypso beans. Olive Nation cannelloni beans. Or cannellini beans. Suzy Q Santa Maria style paquito beans, or paquito beans. That was three different beans. I'm We're getting tracking. back to the beginning of quarantine. I stocked up on dry beans. Didn't know what was gonna happen. Finally, the last two items. Work sharp knife and tool sharpener, Ken Onion edition. If you need me to sharpen your knives, I have a knife sharpener. Ken Onion. I don't know if Ken Onion is a man named Mr. Onion. Mm-hmm. Or it's the guy named Ken, and this is the onion edition. I don't care though, it sharpens my knives. And finally, my first purchase of 2020, cap barbell coated hex dumbbell with contoured chrome handle, single, 60 pounds. Bought two of those. You bought, a, you bought weights. I already have the dial of weight, Bowflex dial of weight, that uh -huh. gets you up to 52.5 pounds. I was like, dude, by the end of quarantine, I'm gonna be too strong for 52 and a half pounds on each arm, I gotta go to 60. How, how, are, how are you using those? You know, bench. You, you using them? Yeah. Okay, good for you. Yeah, when you wanna go deep, yeah. Wow, what a journey. What a journey. What are you, what are you I don't even have an attic, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, you do, we found a rat in it. Oh, I wouldn't call that an attic. But it's not an attic you can store things in. You know, yeah, I call that a rat space. Right. Um, I bought a rat trap after that. I didn't mention that. Did it catch anything? Yeah. It caught more rats? Yeah. How many? Two. Yeah. Oh, you got the one, the. And then I bought some whole sealer. Foam, that stuff that foams up and, and fills holes. No more rats. You got one of the rat traps where they stick their head up into it and it's a. a, it's a Instant kill air compression bolt to their head. Uh, it's electric shock. Um, so uh, this is an episode full of wrecks. Do you have another wreck? No. 
<laughs> uh, it's basically like take your pick from what I just went through. I gotta say some of my favorite things on the list, uh, you know, in terms of like one of the cheaper items that if you're into black licorice, A, you have good taste and B, I do recommend Daryl Lee. It is that soft Australian style licorice and it comes with a little story on the back about how they discovered it because there was like an accident. That's some of the best things that are ever discovered are because of an accident. They, you know, they were typically making this hard licorice and he left it out too long or did something wrong and it came soft and turns right. out that that is the way to enjoy black licorice. Daryl Lee, man. I All right, so that's your rack. better, yeah. Wow, and the year's not even over. You'll probably keep buying stuff. Oh, I got some stuff on the way. I didn't wanna talk about that. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.